This is exciting. We got uh, two former 2002 Brewers. And I mean, the whole world has been talking about these 02 Brewers. <laughs> you lost 106 games. Dream team. <laughs> you, you, you went through two managers, Davey Lopes, Jerry Royster. What was going on this year from your perspective? I came into it three days into the season. I had been put on waivers by the uh, Phillies opening day and got picked up by the Brewers and met up with them immediately at the ballpark. And uh, Davey had already been uh, on the ropes early on. He didn't last much longer after that. I remember him giving us that speech. He goes, guys, if things don't turn around, I ain't going to be here much longer. <laughs> he was gone. They uh, turned over the reins to Jerry Royster. When Dave Stewart was our pitching coach, this is one of my favorite all-time pitchers meetings. We, we all get in a room. We're talking. We're going over the scouting report. And Dave Stewart is sitting there, and he's reading through the scouting report against a right-handed hitter. The right-handed pitcher needed to really throw his slider down and in on him to be effective. And Stewart's like, I don't even think that's physically possible. We're going right on right with slider at the guy's back foot. And just the whole report, he just crumbled it up and threw it out. And Glendon says to him, so what are we supposed to do? And he goes, what have we been doing for 100 years already? Hard in, soft away. Go get him. And that was the end of the meeting. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was Stu. You know, when you join a team, how, how quickly can you enmesh yourself into the chemistry of it all or, you know, find your friends? I mean, I, it seems like you guys became friendly. That team had so many veteran guys that I learned so many little things, nuances of the game. I mean, Lenny Harris was on that team all time. I think he wound up using your bats as he went on to break that record, Glenn, with the, the B363s. Uh, yeah. Glendon Rush used to uh, pinch hit for us. when, it, If it was a, in a losing situation and they didn't want to waste Lenny, hey, G Rush, go grab a bat. Go up there and whack at him. He would go up there and get, get his pinch hits. So, um, Glendon dropped was, bombs, man. Three homers? Uh, <laughs> three homers that, you know, that actually counted. It was like 30 bombs because he would uh, extrapolate it if he only got get bats, you know? That, yeah, that, yeah. I would have got more ABs, yeah. You, you said early on, I was listening with Bobby V, you know, the lefty, he didn't have much, but you know what? He had enough and he would go out there and battle and find your way because he had that mentality of to do my job, I got to go deep into this ball game, right? Keep the bullpen out of it as long as possible and then hand it over to those. We had some real flamethrowers at the back end of that bullpen, hand it over to those guys and see if we can wrap this thing up. If we went less than five innings, we didn't feel like we were doing our job. Um, and for me, I was a long reliever slash starter. So when I didn't have my opportunity to start and I had to be the long reliever, it was difficult to sit around and go, okay, the only time I pitch is if this guy's giving it up because it's usually a losing situation anyway. I was like, man, there's got to be a, a psychiatrist I can talk to, a sports psychologist, because this is a, not the greatest of roles. This isn't what I busted my butt, you know, all through high school, college, the minor leagues to get up to the big leagues to be the guy that, hey, just in case, you know, we're getting our butt kicked. You go in and keep pitching and keep us in a ball game because, I, as we knew, I became expendable at one point. I think it was uh, it was in Houston. We uh, the starter got lit up. I went five and a third, maybe five and two thirds scoreless relief. I was subway sub of the game, and the next day I come into the ballpark and I don't even have a locker. I go to my locker and there's someone else in my locker, and they call me in the office and they're like, "Oh, uh, by the way." Uh, we are, we're going to uh, try and uh, put you through waivers and we're going to send you down to the minor leagues. And I'm like, what do I need to work on? I throw five pitches for strikes. I, I just pitched my butt off last night and, you know, saved the bullpen. Yeah, but, you know, we might need somebody today or even tomorrow. Meanwhile, tomorrow we had an off day and it was a family trip. So I got to sit in the stands and watch my team play while I sat in the stands. <laughs> uh, one night previous, I was pitching on the mound and doing a great job. Now I'm sitting in the stands and watching like a fan. Did they give you a stipend at least? 25 bucks for some hot dogs and peanuts? <laughs> yeah, that's when I realized how much people were paying for beers and hot dogs. It was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Isolate Night with Scott Rogowski, live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern.